Welcome back to the channel. Today we are unboxing, configuring, testing, and reviewing the Atom PS01 millimeter present sensor. Uh, shout out to Simon Says Home Assistant in recommending this sensor. Links in the description below to Simon's channel. So the Atom PS01 present sensor. Well, it's a millimeter present sensor with an integrated PIR sensor and illuminant sensor all built into a compact unit. This allows for quick responses from the PIR sensor that turns the lights on. And then the millimeter sensor allows you to do those small detections of breathing. Yes, breathing. This thing is that sensitive. It can detect the movement of your chest and that keeps the lights on. And it avoids those frantic waving of arms in front of the um, sensor to be able to turn the lights back on. And that gains you your all important partner approval factor and that will allow you to keep on automating your home. The device itself is pretty small, it's well built, it's lightweight, has an excellent mounting bracket that allows for great degrees of movement. It's USB-C powered um, from a supplied five volt, one amp power brick uh, specific to the region that you're in it, when you order. Just note that the supplied cable is power only. It's not a data cable. That will become important later on when we go through the troubleshooting. Currently, the price of this unit is $29, and that's a reduction from $42 US dollars, and there's a $6 shipping fee. Shipping was really quick, uh, took about three or four days, um, and there's a link in the description below to what the timeframes are for your specific region. So this should be virtually plug and play as an ESP device. But I do run through some uh, troubleshooting and remediation steps later in the video that might help you. As usual, we want to avoid making this a very expensive and lightweight paperweight. So let's get into the unboxing. The Athen comes in an attractive box, probably around about 15 centimeters by 10 centimeters. The device itself is loaded inside of it. Removing the packaging, we can see the actual Athen sensor itself. With the mounting bracket on the back and on the bottom. There's a five volt one amp input and a reset button on the side. It comes with a Australian power adapter brick, but it can be chosen to whatever region you come from. There's a mounting bracket that has a pivot ball to be able to adjust. A 3M commander sticky tape and plug and a power cable not data so let's now move over to our phone so in this case i'm using an iphone and i've gone into the settings and i've gone into the wi-fi settings i'm connected currently to iot24 which is a 2.4 gigahertz uh, wi-fi uh, that is specifically nominated for my iot devices as you can see the atom is now showing up as a, a device that is transmitting a Wi-Fi access point. We're going to go along and we're going to connect to this device. So select it on your phone, it should spin for a little bit, then it will connect. Now it will automatically log into the device and present a screen. We're going to select the IoT24, which is 2.4 gigahertz, as I said before. Then we're gonna type in our SSID password, our Wi-Fi password for that SSID. Sorry about the long uh, password. Then we're going to press done, save, and it will start to connect to the IoT24 and should be published and available inside of Home Assistant. Moving back into Home Assistant, we'll see a notification has appeared. Select the notification. We'll see there are new devices. Press the checkout. There is our present center, which is excellent. Press configure, press submit, pick a area that you wish to put it into. In this case, I'm gonna put it into lounge and press finish. We should now be able to search for ESP home. And there is our present center. If we now want to go and have a look at that, we can see that there is a light meter, a microwave sensor, an occupancy and a PIR. Let's quickly rename this present sensor, adopting whatever standard you apply. Press update, confirm all the entities will be renamed as well. Mm -hmm. 
So let's make the assumption that you've uh, tried to do the configuration, tried to install some Home Assistant ESP homes, you've tried to f do load configuration, you've done whatever you've done, but effectively the sensor is now non-functional and is non-responsive. Um, and you need to be able to reset it. And the reset button on the side isn't working either. So if this is the case, you need to uh, be able to flash the device. Now, because of the way that I've been testing this, I had to do this, and I had to be in touch with the Atom technical support to be able to get this. So I'll put some links in the description below for the two pieces of information you need, which is the flasher and also the um, firmware itself. So it's called Node MCU Pi Flasher. If you activate this, you'll be presented with this Node PCU Flasher um, application. I've already done the downloads beforehand. Make sure you do those before. You'll need to plug in your Atom device into the machine that is running uh, the flasher. We're going to connect it via the USB, so it's suggested that you use the auto select. We need to be able to point the Pi flasher to the firmware itself. So we're going to browse and we're going to select the Atom Presence Sensor 1.0 bin, which is the one that's in the link below, which was provided to me by the Atom technical support. Select that. The board rate will be uh, 115200. You'll need to change the flash mode to dual output, and we're going to completely wipe the device. Now, if the device is plugged in, simply press flash node MCU. The flasher will report back firmware successfully flashed. And now we need to restart. It's important to be able to unplug the device to be able to reset it. Now we have our device set up inside a home assistant. It's important to talk about the range of the device. So this applies equally to the PIR and to the microwave components of it. They provide diagrams showing the cones of sensitivity. However, I found that these not necessarily accurate and you need to test them out yourselves. In my testing, the effective range of the device is around about 12 meters, which is excellent for this type and size of microwave or PIR sensor. Now to the topic of tuning. So on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see the configuration options that are available from inside of Home Assistant. At the top in the middle, there are some definitions of each of the individual configuration items. And at the bottom are my options that I use for my setup. As I said, because of the fact that this is going to be tuned to your specific environment, I'm not going to go too much into these ones. However, read through the descriptions and set them accordingly, remembering that Placement for motion sensors is the key. Depending on where you put it will depend very much on what the configuration and tuning that you're going to load into it to get the maximum benefit for it. The second point with tuning that needs to be made is that this is a combined sensor between a PIR and a microwave sensor. So therefore you need to make sure that you put into your automations a trigger for both of those so that you can trigger for the PIR quickly to turn your lights on and also trigger for motion with the microwave sensor. This will ensure that your lights will remain on even if there is not a lot of movement in the room. So, this will be a short roundup. Well, would I buy this device? Quick answer is yes. The integration with the PIR and microwave sensor is a single effective device that integrates well and will be a huge bonus and allow for all those user cases where you have um, people that are going to be in a room but are not going to be moving a lot and therefore you can mix the two automations together to be able to get the partner approval factor for not having the lights go out halfway through something uh, because you're not moving a lot. Saying that, it's very much on a case-by-case -case basis and a user case basis. Uh, you can buy other sensors such as the ESP01 that comes from Everything Smart Home, links below, uh, that provide uh, multiple different uh, sensors in one. They have humidity, temperature, illuminance, PIR, and the microwave sensor all in one device. Excellent device, but that's at three times the price. You can also get additional ones like the Acara FP2, which had multi-person, multi-zone environments 
to be able to see if there are multiple people in a room or where those people are in a room. But that's at four times the price. So it comes down very much to your user case, where you're going to be using the sensor and for what purposes. So thank you very much to Simon from Simon Says Home Assistant in the links below for recommending this sensor. Well, I hope the video has been informative for you um, and given you some ideas about the Atom PS01 microwave sensor and where the pitfalls are around it and how to get it up and running. It's an excellent sensor for the price um, and I highly recommend it. Please like, comment, subscribe, ding that bell to get uh, notifications of when the next videos are coming out. And if you want to put in the comments below anything that you want to see, then let me know and we'll see if we can bring it into the channel. Thanks, everybody.